Hello everyone, this is Janice. Um, today I'm going to show you a baby card that I made today for um, Stacy's grandson, JC. Um, she is um, May Day in some numbers, and she's from Stacy. Also has the blog um, Love That Bug. Blogspot.com. Anyway, I um, and I went up in my attic today, Stacy, and I found Adrian's preemie clothes, and I just want to show you one thing. Look how cute! Look how tiny! Oh my goodness! Is that not adorable? Oh my goodness! I can't believe my son's legs were ever this short. And this was one of our favorites. This was my, my husband bought this for him when we, um, he was in the hospital. He had no clothes, poor little thing, because he was only four pounds. And so my husband picked this out for him, and it was like our, our favorite thing for him to wear. So I'm so excited that I get to pass it on to someone so special. And then, I'm not sending this, Stacy, but this was his first pacifier that he got from the hospital. And the pacifier inspired me to make this card. Okay, so I'm going to show how I did it. And I'm going to be um, sending that package this week, Stacy, to, um, to your daughter. Okay, so JC can, so we can share some of um, Adrian's things with him. Okay, all right, so here is how I did it. Okay, it opens like this and there's a little strip of paper here and the one I'm going to make now is going to be a little different because of I don't have a strip of paper to match. This strip was left over from this cut right here but then um, the second one that I'm going to make now I didn't have the same paper so it's just slightly different and then you can see the shine I think on the pacifier that is glossy accents and some tool and um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So this is a eight and a half by eleven piece of cardstock from Recollections, cut at um, four and a quarter this way. So it's in half the long way. I'm just gonna fold it in half. And I use my bone folder. This paper, whoa, throwing things. Um, is not that thick, so it's easy to just fold it with your bone folder without scoring it. And then what I'm going to do is just use this open scallop punch from EK Success, and I'm just going to center it and just trim it. Let's see. Okay, oh, got a little piece left over over here. All right. Okay. And then what I'm going to do for the coloring is I'm going to use my faded jeans, distress ink, and just getting my blue blue pad that I have here. I just use it for all my blues. I like to kind of just get a scrap and make sure that I it doesn't have too much ink on there. And then what I'm going to do is just ink the inside of the card. Because like I said, I just don't have the right blue. And it's just gonna look like a fading. I think it's fading in the color. Okay, and then there we go. Okay, and then when you open it, it's just kind of like all right. Now I didn't think of this, but I did use that paper to sandwich the tool in between there. 
So I think what I'll do, let's see here. is maybe cut I really want to include that tool in there so I think what I'm going to do is cut another piece of white paper to the size I'm just getting my big old paper trimmer out that's my new tonic paper trimmer I'm going to just use it sideways here. I usually have a little table, but I've had company this weekend. I was trying to make things tidy for my company. Um, I want it to be five, four and a quarter by five and a half. So, five and a half and four and a quarter. So, I want it to be the very size of an A2 size card. Okay, so now, oh, I didn't do it the right size. What did I do? All right, this will work though. What we're gonna do is we're going to put, I've cut some little strips. You can't even probably hardly see them of tool here. And I need my score tape. This is the quarter inch score tape, and it's perfect for when you want to add elements like this, so you want it to stay. Okay, and then it's going to backing off, and then I'm just going to ruffle the tool here as straight as I can or it doesn't really matter it's just really cute it's really pretty for anything that you want to be delicate the tool just automatically gives it a delicate look and the tool is from Michaels it's this comes it's in the bridal section. They have a black, I think, too. I think I want to get some black, maybe for Valentine's. I think it would be pretty. I think they have it in cream, too, but I'm not sure. Okay, so that's enough right there. Let's see. And I'm just going to trim it off. So there, see that? Pretty. And then I'm going to put this on the back just so that you can't see it. You can't see the, it gives it a finished look. And it'll make it a little stiffer too, make it a little more stable. I'll probably send her this one because it'll be. And then looks like I got a. I did not. I did a bad job cutting this. Didn't cut it as precisely as I wanted. But that's okay. It's fine. Okay. Then I have this is some recollections paper as well that has. What's this? Mm, let me just show it to you. It's this one, the primary printed cardstock paper. I've had it for quite a while, and this is the first time I'm using it. So that's going to go in the middle. No, I didn't. I'm still doing my video. So there's the base, pretty much. I have this little white piece of paper that I'm going to corner chomp using the deco side. I 
And then I have this stamp that is, um, it's called Teeny Tiny Backgrounds or Tiny Backgrounds or something like that from Stampin' Up. I got it a long time ago when I was a hostess. And um, I dug them out and used them today because I have to tell you, I would have used my cuddle bug to emboss this background, but it's make it's challenging me the fact that I don't have it. I am, it's making me do different things that I would probably not do. So it's kind of good, you know. It's good to be challenged and do that, something differently than what you would normally do, you know, outside the box type of thing. Okay. So then what I did was I just went around the edges, and this is just a light blue that I got from Michael's, you know, the Studio G ink. And this has to, happens to be pigment ink, which is good to heat set because you, it's easy to smudge. It takes, it takes longer to dry than dye ink. That's the main difference. It stays wet longer so you can you can use it to emboss with. Alright, then the next thing I'm gonna do is this cute little bundle of joy stamp that is probably I couldn't tell you exactly where I got it. I've had it for a while. It might be a Studio G or something that I got at Joann's or something. And I used Ancient Page dye ink pad in cobalt. Thought that matched perfectly that color. Then what I did was um, this is a glaze pen. It comes in a package like that. Got this at Joann's. I believe Michaels carries them too. And I just did all of the faux stitching. Just dashes all the way around, just to kind of tie it all together, finish it off a little. I really like the way this background turned out. And I'm just going to go around, and this ink dries with kind of a glazy look to it. And it's supposed to be good to be used on, you know, acetate and glass and things like that. I tried using it on an ornament and honestly I, I didn't have too much success, but I like the way it looks on paper. It's cute. And it doesn't take too long to dry. Okay, now next step is I need to cut up some fun foam to use on the back because this part is going to be popped up. Since this is going in a package, I really didn't care how much dimension I added because I'm not sending it in the mail by itself. So I say bring on the dimension. Okay, so let's let that dry a little bit and I'm going to cut kind of a, a little length of tool to use on it. So I'm just going to, so I don't forget, okay? And okay, we're done with this. And then we're going to bring in my, one of my favorites, my little polka dot stamps that I got at Michael's and I'm going to use this pigment ink again and just stamp this part of the pacifier with these cute polka dots. And then I'm going to take it a step further and just ink the edges of the passy. That's what we used to call it, passy. And then 
that's the base and then here is the nipple part of the pacifier and um, I remember when I was little the pacifiers had that brown look to them or like you know, skin tone looking so I'm using my Copic Skin White E00 to color in this part of the pacifier to look like it's skin tone. And I know they still have them. Some babies like those clear silicone ones. I think that's what my son ended up using after he was done with those soothies. He definitely was a pacifier kid. We used those things till, till it broke is what we called it. It's broken, so you can't use it anymore. Sorry. And that's all I said, because it's broken. Because <laughs> I didn't have the heart to say, no, you can't have it <laughs> anymore. You know, that's hard. Okay, so I'm going to put this down here. I'm looking for my... Oh, there they are. Tweezers. I get so used to using these things. And they're like a pacifier to me. <laughs> I get so annoyed when I misplace them. <clears throat> and then we'll put this on there. Um, I think I put this on upside down. That's okay. It works. This part, I think, is upside down. I wonder if there's another piece that goes there. I don't know. It looks cute. Okay, so that's part of it. Okay, now, let's go back to this. I've got to tie the um, tool, and I cut way too much. And it's on the other side. I'm just gonna make a little knot. I usually use my block, but when I was making this card, I was trying to do it quickly because I had a few things I was doing at the same time. So I just went this route and it works fine. But I did waste quite a bit here. So I'll probably save this to make more ruffles for another card. Okay, and that's going to go there. And this is way too big. Trim it down a little bit more. That'll get me another ruffle. And maybe I'll get another ruffle out of that one. Okay, and then we're going to put these on the back to pop it up. It's gonna be another long video, guys. Sorry. Hope you don't mind. And I know I said I was gonna do a layout, a hearts layout, and I have the picture and I have the plan. I just got inspired to make this card because I want to send out that package to my little buddy JC little baby. I pray for him all the time. So, you know, I just have grown fond of him even though I've never ever met them. That's what happens when you pray for people. That's a good thing. Okay, so there's that part. Then this part is going to get popped up. The little passy right there. I'm gonna put it, pop it up. And, oh my gosh, come on. Okay. 
And then I did cut a bunch of tiny ones to go around this part of the passy. This one seems to be a little wide. Oh, that's good. I found other stuff up in the attic today. I spent about an hour up there and I dug up some treasures, some books I was looking for for my son from when I was teaching that I was wondering just this very week. I was like, wonder where that is and I wonder where that is and I found them. So it was great. Great, great, great. I'm excited. I have these how to draw books, you know, like how to draw dogs or zoo animals. He's starting to really get into drawing. So, Okay, and then the last step is to take my glossy accents, and it's not clogged, surprise, surprise, and I'm just going to cover up the entire passy to give it that glossy new passy look. the whole thing and let me tell you don't be shy to use your glossy accents this stuff lasts forever I got some on there darn it's okay all right and then just keep going if you wanted to add glitter to it you could do that now I'm not going to add glitter I think this is nice and shiny and you know it takes a little bit to dry maybe like half an hour or so and there's some bubbles and there's just tap the back. And that's it. And then I just tap the glossy accents like that and just kind of make sure there's air coming out to kind of prevent the clogging problem. And there it is. Ruffle and all. And I hope that they like it. So thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned for my hearts layout. Bye.